Good afternoon, y'all, and welcome back. So today's video is all about the big maintenance we need to complete on this camper before we hit the road. And since we're hitting the road next week, we have a lot of things to get done. And back by popular demand is Phil. Hi, Phil. How you doing? And Phil's chair. You ready to help me do all this maintenance? Sure, you gotta come with me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get it. So anyway, the first thing we're gonna do is our generator is due for maintenance based on hours. So we're gonna fire this thing up right now and let it warm up and get the oil nice and hot. And then we're gonna change the oil, the air filter, the spark plugs, and the fuel filter. So we let the generator run for about 15 minutes. Now everything's nice and hot. And before we get started, Phil, do you know the reason why we're doing all this? Because it's time to do it. Well, there's two reasons. It is time to do it, but also we're here at an RV park and we're not living in it. So there's some maintenance you want to do when you're not living in it and some maintenance you can do when you're on the road. The stuff we're doing in this video is all the things you'd like to do before you go adventuring. That way when you're adventuring, you're just, you're just doing preventive maintenance. Right. This is the big maintenance. So after we're done with the generator, we're going to work on checking the greasing and the axles and we're going to do a good flush and dump and we're going to sanitize our water tanks. All those things you don't really want to do when you're out adventuring. Those are the big jobs. Those are the jobs we try to plan every time we come home. For our generator, we ordered this kit off Amazon. It's the uh, the Owen and Max uh, Cummins generator. Uh, I guess it's, uh, I don't know what they call it. The, uh, I guess it's called a, a tune-up kit maybe? Tune-up kit. So it comes with oil, spark plugs, fuel filter, uh, air cleaner, and new oil filter. Also, it comes with this thing right here, which is super convenient because this oil filter is almost impossible to get off the way it's mounted up underneath there. You have to use this. I tried last time without doing it and I had to buy this just to change it. Today, we're gonna try to service all these and that should buy us almost another 400 hours, I think, of runtime before we do this again. Right. Well, the oil will be changed, I think, every 150 hours, but all this other stuff, it's good for a long time. So the first step is we're gonna drain the oil in this thing. And what's really cool about it is it has this valve right here. So all I have to do is open this valve and there's a tube that runs up under here. The rags are there to help divert it so it doesn't get on my frame. Also, here is the oil filter. When you're under here, once you get it drained, you loosen that and change your oil filter. And then we remove this right here for our air filter and our spark plugs, which are really, really tucked back in there. We're gonna change that one and this one over here. And the last thing is the fuel filter. The line of the fuel filter is right there. And the bad thing about it is if it's your first time doing it, which is ours, they have a metal crimp on. So you actually have to cut that crimp off and change this fuel filter out and replace it with a uh, hose clamp. Hey Phil, what? how's it going? Well, we were doing pretty good and then God decided to turn the sprinkler on. So it hasn't rained in forever here in Texas. And now as soon as we try to do work, it does this. So now we're hanging out underneath the camper. We rushed to get all the tools picked up. We have almost everything dry. Good news, it feels like it's in the 70s with that wind blowing right now. Yeah, it feels good. The bad news is, is when that rain stops, you know the sun's gonna come back out and it's gonna feel like we're working in a swimming pool. Steamy. It's gonna Steamy. get hotter. <laughs> but for now, we're just hanging out, enjoying the rain. The day wouldn't be complete without me and Phil having to go to the blue store at least once. So, since it was raining, I know it doesn't look like it's raining anymore and don't worry. We left because it was soaking wet and everything we had to do was covered in water. So we decided to let it dry out. Well, it's already 94 degrees out again. So it looks like when we go back, it's gonna be extra hot and steamy. That's just what we need, isn't it? <laughs> so we're here because we need a hose clamp to finish up the fuel filter on the generator. And I found out I need batteries in my tire link sensors. All right, Phil, good news and bad news. What's the good news? Good news is we have our hose clamp and we're back at the camper and it's for the most part dried up. Bad news, how humid is it right now? It is very humid. <laughs> so we went from 100 outside to maybe 90 outside. 
but it feels like 120. It's hot. It's hot now. We're gonna get the hose clamp on and get this thing primed and fired up, make sure there's no leaks, make sure it's running good. We just test ran the generator after changing the air filter, the oil, the spark plugs, and the fuel filter, and we found no leaks, and we ran it for about 30 minutes under load. Then we're gonna button this thing back up, and we're gonna go start working on the axles. Hey, what are you doing? Remember when it rained? Yeah. Guess where a lot of that rainwater went? Probably in that box. Yeah, so we had these boxes underneath the fifth wheel, but it was pouring off right on top of them. This is my wash and wax box. Come look inside. It's full of water. So all my pads and everything. So now we have to lay everything out, let them dry out. And I'm sure the other four boxes are just as full. Three of my four boxes that were out when we were working, they got rained on, were full of water. And it literally came so quick that we grabbed them as soon as it started raining and they were still full of water with all the stuff inside soaking wet. So here we are, trying to dry everything out hopefully before we put them back in there so that we don't open them up and have problems later because everything got wet. So next up, we wanna make sure all of our bearings are topped off with grease. Now, you just saw me about three months ago pull these off and pack them full of fresh grease. Well, it's only been about 3,000 miles, but we're about to hit the road for about a 5,000 mile trip. I wanna make sure everything's good. We have the easy lube axles, which means I can actually pull this cap off. It looks like this right here. So you pull this cap, and this inner rubber cap and it gives you access to the grease fitting on the axle now in order to do this the right way you have to lift the tire up off the ground and rotate it while you're pumping grease into the axle and you can start to see when the grease is coming out right here inside there so what we're going to do we're going to use our auto leveling system to lift this side of the camper up leaving that side on the ground enough to get these tires to rotate we have this side of the camper lifted up and you can see all three tires will rotate freely now I'm gonna go ahead and get my grease gun, like right there, and I'm gonna hook it onto that grease fitting, and I will start filling it full of grease as I rotate the tire until I start seeing fresh grease come out inside the dust cap. All right, so we have all three of these axles greased, and you can see they're still off the ground and they can spin freely. Now, in order to proceed with the next side, we need to put these back on the ground. And to do that, we're gonna use our one control app. But there's some things you have to watch out for. So you see right now, this axle is actually flipped upside down. So when we go to lower it, we need to make sure that it flips by itself. We don't put it in a bind. We're going to lower it right now and y'all can watch what happens. All right, so you can see we have the, the uh, shackle flip back over right. And now we're going to go to the other side and lift it off the ground and do the same job on that side. All right, Phil, they off the ground? They are off the ground. All right, so we got this side off the ground. We're going to pull those caps in the middle and apply grease to every one of those axles. And then we're going to set this back on the ground and we're going to do a torque check of all six tires. Now that we have all six axles greased, we're going to verify torque. And ours takes 120 foot pounds. So I'm going to use this torque wrench right here and go around each one of the tires and verify that all the lug nuts are torqued to 120 foot pounds. That's because I don't want to find out when we're on the road for the first time after being sitting for three months that we might have an issue. Now that we've verified torque on all the rims, one last thing to do as far as greasing goes, because we got this creeper here that Phil's letting us borrow, actually Mr. Thomas is letting us borrow it, we're gonna slide up underneath there and we're gonna grease all the suspension components. So we're gonna re grease all the wet bolts and all the shackles and everything under there so that we will be ready to go mechanically. We're under the trailer and this is our suspension components. So when we first got the camper, we installed the Moride heavy duty shackle kit and wet bolts, as well as these Moride cross members which tie in from the equalizer hangers from one side of the frame all the way to the other side of the frame. So now that we have the wet bolt kit, I think we have 22 grease points under here, basically everywhere that it pivots to put grease on. Hey Phil. Yeah. Are you tired? Pretty tired. I'm tired. Well, you've done all the work, you ought to be tired. <laughs> so anyway, we have finished up with all the major mechanical things we wanted to accomplish today. So we've serviced the generator. We have verified that we have grease in all of our axle bearings on all sides of the trailer. We verified torque on the rims and we have greased all the suspension components. 
Now, Alicia just called and said that their hometown that Phil lives in is having a back to school bash tonight. So we're gonna take a break right now. Obviously we had to clean all this mess up. Ready for this? I'm ready. Yeah. And then we're gonna go home and gather the girls and take them up to the local, I think it's the library. And they're gonna have all kinds of food and I guess carnival games and water slides. So we're gonna clean this up and we'll see y'all at the back to school bash. All right, so what are we doing? We're at the back to school bash. Even though our kids aren't school age, they get to participate because all kids are welcome. There's a fire truck there. and there's lots of blow up there's water a, slides. There's a snow cone shack. There's a food truck. They're going to have lots of fun. We're going to wear them out and they're going to sleep like, great tonight. She's going to be like, let's go back to school all the time. And we brought cousin Avi so she could come uh, play with the girls. Are you ready to go? I like Do you want to go see the fire truck? Yeah. Do you want to go see the fire truck? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. You want to go ask the man if we can see the fire truck? Oh, look. They have more. Uh oh. Look. They give you a coloring book, too. Let me hold it for you. There you go. We'll put these in the truck for y'all so y'all can go down the. Avery, you want one? You want to go get a coloring book? You want to put it in the truck? What do you say? Can you say thank, thank you? you? You want to go? Uh oh. oh the colors here Avery, firefighters are awesome here let's put the colors in here <laughs> <laughs> thank y'all is this cool are y'all firefighters what is going on over here what do you see ashlyn how many slides until one of our children are upset because they did not follow the rules of feet first <laughs> oh i told them feet first at the first time i don't really care i guarantee you that. kayla is not going feet first kayla's going stomach first head down she's trying to get up the steps right now this is their first time to do something like this i'm interested to see how it we goes. did something like this back in colorado when you get your hair done What's there's it? no water though oh yeah this is the first but they were this big oh really oh wow the indoor place oh yeah 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 so let's see how it goes kayla's holding Woo! Napkins and cups. Yeah. And daddy's. This has sharks in it. Shark candy. You want one? Why are you giving away my sharks? <laughs> you want a shark candy? I want a shark candy. Grab one. There you go. I had five. I got drinks. Let me guess. Go. You want one too? So no. I want to get one. <laughs> I don't. You can have both. Was the back to school bash a success? It was awesome. Did y'all have fun? Yeah. How much fun? Woo! What's that? Is that a pineapple? <laughs> Stressful. So when we're <laughs> driving, they can work out their stress. <laughs> so they don't have to argue. Did you have fun oh, on the slides? Yeah. They got coloring books. They got school supplies. They got their eyes checked. We had snow cones. It was a good time. Except for, for one thing. What? Now we're hungry. Yes. Now it's time to eat. So we got to go make sure baby boy's okay. And then we'll go grab some dinner. What do y'all want to eat? Of course. Chicken. Hey. Every, by the way, everything's chicken. <laughs> hey, y'all. Welcome back. So, we Hello. got Phil. 
and me and we're back from last night at the back to school bash with the girls hope you guys enjoyed us including some fun time along with the work but now it's time to get back to the work so yesterday we took care of the generator maintenance greasing the bearings on the axles and the suspension and today we're gonna finish up with the water system so before we hit the road we want to go ahead and flush and dump our tanks really good as well as perform a freshwater tank sanitization process we're gonna get started this morning by hooking up our sewer tubes so we have our sewer tubes hooked up and i'm not going to hook them up the right way with my uh, little staircase slankies and that's because this is the first time we've ever been somewhere for long term and i learned why people use the pvc pipes because i had these set up the right way and then the lawn crew came around and they did a number on everything with their weed eaters so today i'm hooking them up just like this because as soon as we're done with what we're doing i'll put them back away the first step is we're going to go ahead and dump anything we got in our black tanks and our gray tanks and then when we're done doing that we're going to start flushing our rear black tank and our forward black tank and to do that we have this black hose right here that goes in a giant circle through this flow meter right here into my black tank flush ours is a 54 gallon tank 54 right here 54 up here so i usually put about 40 to 45 gallons in it and then i will pull the dump valve and let all that water come out and then when i'm done draining it i will close the valve and repeat the process so typically it takes three to four flushes before the water going in looks the same coming out it's no longer dirty so that's what we're going to do today we're going to flush these really good so it may take four to five times however many times it takes until the water coming out after it's been through the tank is clear and then we will move on to the sanitizing process now this is not going to be a step-by-step -step, and if you guys are interested in a step-by-step -step, i actually have a video where i showed you exactly how to do the dumping and flushing and how we maintain our tanks while on the road I'll link it down below. You can go check it out if you want to, and that will be a step-by-step -step on how to do it. So while we let the rear black tank do its flushing procedure, we're gonna take this time to air up our tires. Now to do that, we're gonna use this right here and our onboard air system. Now some of you guys have seen my air system because I like to haunt my train horn, but it's it really is more useful than just a train horn. It's to control my airbags and so I can have the opportunity to air up my tires on my truck and my trailer. Now with these two hoses right here, we can actually reach all six tires on the camper being parked in front of the camper. Now that, the reason I went with the 200 PSI system is because our tires take 110 PSI. So this does the job, no problem. Now if you're interested in how we have this set up or how we installed it ourselves, I'll link the video in the description below. So we just finished airing up all six of our tires to 111 PSI. I oversteered a little bit because we have these tire length sensors right here. And when you put them on, it usually bleeds off just a little bit of pressure. Now I just checked them on my tire link system, which ties into my one control and my camper on my phone. And they're all reading zero PSI. Now normally they go to sleep when we've been sitting this long, but usually when they're asleep, they read the last pressure and temperature setting they were before they went to sleep. Right now they're reading zero, which means they're probably all dead. But that's actually kind of impressive because we've had these on here for two years. So those batteries lasted two years. The tire link system is awesome because it links to my phone and my truck when we're driving and we can set the temperature settings and the air pressure settings for when alarms go off and we'll get a notification in our truck while we're driving. So we're gonna change the batteries and see if they go back to working. We might have to go through the sync procedure, which isn't that bad. The app is actually awesome. It walks you through it. So it basically tells you front left, middle left, rear left front right middle right rear right it takes about 30 seconds for each one to sync up and start communicating but once it does then you can tell which tire is causing the problem so you can go look at it before it becomes a big deal i'll link that system in the description down below and you guys can check it out if you have a one control system it's the best way to integrate a tire pressure monitoring system into stuff you already have and you don't have to clutter up the dash of your truck so we just changed all the batteries and the tire link sensors and according to the app they appear to be working but to make sure they are working we're going to go around to each tire i'm going to remove the sensor wait for the alarm to come on saying i have zero psi and then i will confirm that they do in fact work and then we'll move on to each tire just to make sure they are working just verify that all six of the tire link sensors are working correctly i'm actually very surprised i have to resync those but that's pretty cool that once you set them up they will remember themselves even when you change the batteries the back rear black tank back rear back rear twice twice backs 
Anyway, the rear black tank is done flushing. It took three flushes and it's clear water. So now we're gonna move all this stuff right here, the front black tank. So while we wait for the front black tank to flush, we decided to go ahead and get all the boxes out that got water in them from the rain yesterday and let them dry out better. So we have our entire maintenance box, my fishing box, and all my wash and wax box for my truck, as well as all of our chairs and our rugs. So yesterday when that rainstorm came, it happened so quick that almost every one of those boxes, they were sitting right here but they filled up like that much of water in just a short amount of time it took us to grab them get them back underneath the fifth wheel we're almost done we're on uh, round two with the flushing we have one more round to go it's already starting to clear up and then we're going to move on to our last step which is to sanitize the freshwater tanks and i already have the hot water heater prepped i have the hot water heater turned off and i'm about to bleed the valve actually i'll bleed it now so we'll bleed it out there's no hot water in it. I actually turned it off yesterday, so I wouldn't have to deal with this. But if you still had hot water in it, all you have to do is go inside and turn your taps on on the hot side until there's no more hot water. So that's just about done. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the hot water heater anode rod out and see how bad it looks. Now we just changed this like six months ago before we went on our Florida trip. And I'm actually curious to see how bad it looks. They say if you live in a camper full time, you should probably do it twice a year. And if you're a weekend warrior or just part time it, once a year is fine. I'm actually betting that the thing is pretty destroyed because I know how bad the water is in Florida. So it in fact does look pretty bad. You can see all the sediments coming out in there. So we're gonna have to go ahead and clean this tank out and I'll show you guys that in a minute. But check out this rod. So this is what it looks like after just six months of use. Now most of that was Florida and we all know Florida water is not that great, especially at RV parks. But just for comparison, this is what a new one looks like. So you can see it was doing its job. It probably could have gone like another six months, honestly. I mean, it's only really bad right here at the uh, at the bottom. It's eating it through pretty good. But overall, the whole thing is not completely destroyed yet. But we try to change ours every six months because we do live in it full time and we do run a lot of water through it. So now that we're done flushing, we're gonna take this tool right here and put it on our water hose. And we're gonna stick it inside the hot water heater tank and we're gonna turn it on. And we're gonna pull it just like this and you'll start to see all the sediment. Look at all those sediments coming out. So we'll just repeat this until all the sediments from inside the hot water heater tank come out. It usually takes four or five tries, but you'll end up getting it to where it's completely clean. We have the hot water heater tank flushed out. It's now got no more sediment coming out. We just finished our last flush of the front black tank. And normally if we were just dumping and flushing, we would start treating our tanks right now. But since we're about to sanitize our tanks, we're not gonna put any treatment in the tanks. Now, if you're wondering where Phil went, Phil went inside because it's really hot out here right now and yesterday we got a little too hot so right now he's inside soaking up the AC and I'm just finishing up with the dumping and flushing about to start the sanitizing now before we get started it's important to know you don't want your water filters involved in the next part of the process because you're about to run bleach well actually you don't want to waste your water filter right now because we're going to be filling the fresh water tank up with just water that's going to have bleach in it. So we don't want to run 150 gallons through there when it's just going to have bleach in it anyway. So we're going to remove that one. That's actually our new Blue Technology three-stage water filter, and it's awesome. It's been great for us. It's allowed us to remove the filter you put on the spigot, and we're probably going to remove this one as well because that one will filter water down to 0.2 micron and it still remains a high flow filter. So you don't even notice it in your showers inside. Now, if you guys are interested in trying this out, click the link in the description below and you can save yourself 10% on the new Blue Technology R3 three-stage water filter. I'm gonna disconnect that one from the line because I don't need it there just to fill my fresh water tanks. This one's already pulled out and the housing is back on because I'm gonna run bleats through there. Also, the one inside the house that's for our freshwater drinking, I've pulled the filters out as well so we don't run bleach through them either. We're ready to start sanitizing. And I'm not gonna do a complete step-by-step -step today with you guys. If you guys are interested in the actual step-by-step -step on how all this works, as well as this P1 Nautilus system, I have a video I made and I'll link it in the description below. You can go check it out. I'm gonna give you a real brief overview. So right now, we have our five gallon bucket with the water and bleach mixture and we have it set up with this four foot hose into our freshwater supply. And we have our P1 Nautilus system set to sanitize, which means when I turn the pump on up here, it will suck all this out into my freshwater tanks. Now we'll do this three times because we wanna get one cup for every 50 gallons. So we have 
150 gallon freshwater tank. So you need three cups of bleach water mixture inside the tank. So we have filled our three buckets into our freshwater tank. And you can see we left our hot water heater anode rod out because we want to ensure that our hot water heater system is bypassed and we're not putting bleach inside the tank. And the P1 system allows you to do that because of this guy right here. Now our next step is to flip this over from the sanitize to the winterize, which means we're gonna pump with our onboard pump from this bucket to all the fixtures inside the house. Hey Phil, we found you. I told them that you were inside because it's starting to get hot outside. It's hot, it's like it's, torture. I'm glad we're almost done because I'm starting to get burned up. Yesterday was too hot and I think it's hurting us today. It is. So anyway, we have the bucket set up so that we can run our faucets inside with our bleach mixture. And we'll come back here, we're in the hot and the cold, the shower, the toilet and the sink. Then we'll come back in the kitchen. We're on the hot and cold of the kitchen sink. We'll come into the master bath. We're on the sink, the shower and the toilet. And then we will come into the washing machine and we will run a cycle, actually washing machine, sorry. We run a cycle of hot water and cold water until we smell bleach at all the fixtures. That way we know every water line in this camper, the hot and the cold side, is full of bleach. Now that we're done with all the fixtures on the inside, we have a little bit of water left. It's important to remember your outside shower. So we have one right here and we actually have one on the front of the camper to wash Buddy and his feet off right by the door. So we're gonna go ahead and hook these guys up right here and make sure we run water through those lines as well. So now we've put all of our water and bleach mixture to all of our faucets around the camper. We also added three cups of our bleach mixture into the freshwater tank. Now it's time to hook up our freshwater supply and hose from the spigot and we will fill our freshwater tanks until they overflow right here at the overflow valve. All right guys, so while we let the freshwater tanks fill up, I have another dilemma I need your help with because I don't know what to do. So when we were in Florida at Beverly Beach, when we parked on the beach, the salt water did a number to my rear steps. I don't know if you guys can see this. There was no rust until we got there and now it's rusting basically at every joint. I don't know what to do to make this go away. Right now I have an idea to slow it down. So I have this dry graphite spray film that I figured I would spray on there and at least stop it from rusting any worse until I can figure out what to do. So what, what should I do here? How do I fix this? What do I need to do to make all this better and look stock? I also have a few other places around the camper very similar to this, like all the metal hangers on the sewer tubes. Those are starting to rust as well, but I figured I would just paint those. But I don't know about this. Do I, can I paint this or should I take it apart and try to fix it? I'm not even sure you can take it apart. Oh, it has a little, little snap ring. So yeah, you could take it apart. It'd be a big, it probably would not go back together. But what do you do? How do you fix this and make it look good again? Because I feel like it's only gonna get worse. So I covered it in the dry graphite lube and it looks better and it also works a lot better. Like this thing was really starting to stick and didn't bend very well. Now, it folds up awesome. I'm just gonna keep it sprayed for right now and let you guys let me know, how can I fix this without taking it all the way apart or buying a new one? Do I have to take it apart and repaint the whole thing? Or is it just gonna flake off again if I do that? What's, is it even worth it? Will this work? Or maybe there's that fluid film that might keep it from, uh, from corroding so fast either. All right, so we have water coming out the overflow. That means our fresh water tank is now full. So we'll kill the fresh water supply. Now that we have our fresh water tank full of the bleach and water mixture, as well as all the lines through all the fixtures throughout the entire camper, we're gonna let that sit overnight. And me and Phil are gonna go find somewhere nice and cold to hang out in the AC for the rest of the day. See you guys tomorrow. So our camper has set overnight about 18 hours with the bleach and water mixture in the fresh water tank and in all the lines throughout the camper. Now the next part is the most time consuming part. It's actually very easy to do, it just takes a lot of time. So what we need to do is we need to take the 150 gallons of the bleach and water mixture in our fresh water tank and we need it to not be in there anymore. So what we'll do is we'll use our onboard pump and we will pump it from there, the fresh water tank, into our gray tanks and that way we can dump it out of the camper. Once we move all 150 gallons from the freshwater tank to the gray tanks and get rid of it, we will then refill the freshwater tank with fresh water. So we have all the bleach and water mixture moved from the freshwater tank into the gray tanks and we've dumped it. And now you will have to come out here and dump a little bit of the water because our pump, when it starts cavitating, leaves about 10 or 12 gallons of water in the freshwater tank. So we dumped the remaining water out and now we have the valves closed and we're gonna turn on the fresh water and fill the fresh water tank. So we have the fresh water tank filled with fresh water. And now the time consumed, well, I guess it's the same amount of time as the first time. Now we're gonna go inside and we're gonna run the rear shower, sink and toilet, the kitchen sink, the master bathroom shower, sink and toilet, 
and the washing machine. We're gonna run all of them until we no longer smell bleach. So the idea is we're gonna move all 150 gallons from our freshwater tank into our gray and black tanks. And then once we're done, we will dump all that out. And if it still smells like bleach, we're gonna have to do a second flush. But normally, it's pretty close with the first flush. It's 150 gallons will most of the time get all the smell out. So we just finished moving all the 150 gallons of fresh water throughout the entire system, flushing all the lines and fixtures out with fresh water. And the bleach smell is gone. So we're probably gonna call that good. Now the next step is to come over here and we need to reinstall our water filter. So I'm gonna pull this off and put a fresh water filter in there. I'm also gonna put a fresh water filter under our sink for our drinking water. And then we need to work on the hot water heater. So we're done changing our filters and the last thing we wanna do is take care of the hot water heater. So we've already reinstalled our new hot water heater anode and now we're gonna leave the vent open and we're gonna take the hot water heater out of bypass and we're gonna let the hot water tank fill up. It's gonna take a minute. I think it's a 12 gallon tank, so it takes a second. All right, now that that's filled, we can go ahead and get everything back together right here and set our camper back up for normal use. Welcome to Texas, where apparently it rains every single day for just 15 or 20 minutes, just enough to make it hotter outside. So now that we're done flushing and dumping our tanks, we're gonna set everything back up and getting ready to hit the road. I'm actually gonna go ahead and treat my tanks now. Now, like I said before, if you guys are interested in knowing the step-by-step -step for the uh, flushing and dumping and treating the tanks, or the, how to sanitize your fresh water tanks, I will link the videos in the description below. Anyway, guys, thanks for hanging out with us. This is the last work we have to do for a long time. This is all the major stuff we need to do so that we can hit the road and just do preventive maintenance from here on out. So anyway, hope you all enjoyed it. See y'all next time.